Hi guys! Thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at Legacy Collectibles taking a look at Party Leader PPKs. This is uh, an example of the Walther PPK, a subvariant of the PPK that is in tremendous demand by collectors, and very highly valued, and very easily faked. So I have the opportunity today, through Legacy, to show you legitimate, proper, correct examples of all three types, and also of some of the fakes, so that you can get an idea for what's right and what's wrong. Now before we go into this, I want to touch on briefly what is the history? Like what are these things to begin with? Because what a lot of people see is, oh, it's a PPK with a swastika on it. Well, in some ways it is. The specific history of these is the initial batch of about 30,000 of these guns was manufactured in 1934 and 1935, and it was something that was available at a special discounted price only to not necessarily leaders, but uh, employees, active members of the Nazi party. Um, so not, you know, a lot of people in Germany were members of the Nazi party, because a lot of professions required party membership once the party came into power. But for those people who held, say, government jobs actively working for the party, guys, you know, politicians, bureaucrats, uh, local town mayors, provincial governors, the, the Gauleiter, um, as well as you know, all sorts of other functionaries within the Nazi party, one of the perks of being a party member was you got access to this nice status symbol of a PPK pistol. So the initial batch, as I said, were made in 34 and 35. There was then, and those actually don't have a swastika on them at all. Those are the RZM type, which we'll take a look at in a moment. They then kind of changed things around, and in 1938 they decided to offer them again but this time it would be a standard gun that had a nice special Nazi party grip on it. And so not everyone, you know, there were some new party members by that point who hadn't been involved in 35. Some of those people bought new guns. And then some people also had the option to just buy a grip and put the fancy new grip on their, the gun that they already had. This continued for a little while. Um, and then by late in World War II, the small sort of trickle of, of party leader guns that were still being uh, offered and sold started being made with a black grip. So those are our three main variations, the RZM, the red grip, or brown grip, and the black grip. Now let's take a close look at these one at a time. All right, we'll go ahead and start with the RZM version. This is the earliest. There are about 30,000 of these made in 1934 and 1935, and they're called RZM because they have this round RZM marking on the slide. That stands for Reich Zeug Meisterei, which is basically the, the party quartermaster company, or, or party supply authority. Um, this was the organization that was set up to uh, purchase stuff of all sorts. Uh, uniforms, weapons, um, all sorts of just equipment uh, for the Nazi party, the, the NSDAP organization itself. So, so when they decided that Nazi party officials ought to be able to get this nice badge of rank sort of uh, pistol at a special price, that contract was all run through the RZM. In addition to the marking on the slide, these can be identified roughly by serial number. They'll run from about 820,000 to about 844,000, although there are, unfortunately, uh, uh, there are some examples outside of that serial number range as well, um, because there, there were about 30,000 and that covers about 26,000 guns. Now in 1938 they went back and looked at this and decided to make the gun a little bit fancier, because if it's supposed to be a badge of special rank and authority and you know your, your position in the governing body of the country, well it ought to look the part, more than just having a special price tag for you. So they introduced a party leader gun that had this fancy swastika and eagle grip on it. On both sides of the grip, in fact. And so this came out in 1938. However, you could also just buy the grip. So there are some guys who had maybe already bought an RZM gun, because they were an official in the party back in 35. They could just buy this grip and put it on their pre-existing gun to make it look better. Uh, this makes sense from the time period, but it also significantly complicates authenticating these guns. That's the biggest issue with these, is trying to figure out if they're real or not real, because there are a lot of reproduction versions of these grips that go... You know, a reproduction grip is maybe a couple hundred dollars, and an authentic 
party leader gun is maybe just shy of $10,000. So there's a huge, very huge difference in price that comes from putting an authentic grip on an authentic gun. Now one tool we have at our disposal to help authenticate is the serial numbers. Uh, we know that the party leader grip was introduced in 1938, and most of these guns were made in 1938, or were sold in 1938. So uh, a 1938 serial number range would be 174,000 to about 250,000, with a K suffix for PPK. That of course doesn't mean that every gun made in 1938 was sold as a party leader, but it does mean that if you're presented with one of these guns and the serial number falls outside of that range, well, you should be a little skeptical. It doesn't necessarily mean it's fake, because, as I said, you could buy just the grip and put it on a pre-existing gun. You could also have gotten one of these and decide to, you know, maybe your gun gets damaged and you take the grip off and put it on a later production gun. Both of these things are perfectly plausible, and they make authenticating really difficult. Now, when you bought this gun, this was, by the way, something you had to purchase. Just because you're in the party and a, you know, an official town mayor or something, they're not going to give you a pistol, but they will give you the opportunity to pay some money for it. And this is what it's going to look like when you get it. There's going to be a green... The, the label changed a bit, but in this case it's a green label. Um, our serial number here is 223,000, so this again is 1938 production. Inside we've got a cleaning rod. We've got our original manual that comes with the gun, and then you're going to get a pistol and a couple of accessories. So the gun came with one magazine with the uh, little finger extension, it came with one magazine without. These magazines are not serial numbered. Uh, there are actually some serial numbered PPs and PPKs, or serial numbered magazines. Those are for special contracts outside of the norm, so that's a subject for another video. Then you also got this little aluminum tin. The early ones had a picture of the Walther factory on top, later they would go to just a big Walther banner. And inside we have some horsehair for cleaning the gun with, and what's called a little milk crate uh, for oil. So that is what your brand new in the box party leader pistol would look like. Put that back the right way. And maybe counterintuitively, a lot of surviving party leader guns are actually in beautiful condition, maybe not quite as good as this one, but a lot of them are in basically unfired mint condition, and that's because these guns virtually never saw combat. This was often a gun for a bureaucrat, or a functionary, or a politician. These didn't go to the Eastern Front, they oftentimes sat in their box, just like this, in a desk drawer, or in a, a closet, um, as, you know, I bought this because it was the thing to do as a party member, but you know, I don't actually carry it, it just sits there. And then when the war ends it gets found, uh, and ends up in the hands of a USGI. Alright, now the biggest thing is how do, you, how do you identify a fake grip from a real grip? So I have a real party leader grip worth, I don't know, $7,000, and a fake party leader grip worth $200. Part of what makes this difficult is the color patterning on these grips is unique. These are like fingerprints. Every single one of them is a little different. There's varying amounts of black that goes into this. So this is real, this is also real. These are all, of course, uh, regular, you know, standard production grips, not party leader grips. But these were all made in the same process, in the same, not quite the same mold, because they had to add the, the decorative bits. But uh, the same materials went into all of these grips, whether they were standard guns or party leaders. This is a particularly early one before they had nearly as much black in the mixture, but there's no special pattern to these, they're all different. But all is not lost. There are a couple of features that you can look at to at least get a good start on authenticating one of these. So this is our real one, this is our fake one. First thing you'll notice is that the real ones have a piece of metal, thin sheet metal, in the bottom of the grip, and that's to reinforce it so that this doesn't bend closed and crack. You can actually see a little bit of a bump right there where the metal's inside the plastic. Now the earliest of the fake grips didn't have that metal reinforcing, so that's a pretty good giveaway. They then, the second batch, once they realized that they needed to improve that, uh, went to a very bright shiny piece of metal, when in, in real ones this is kind of matte and, and dulled 
um, in color. So this one, however, is past those two. This one they've is, is from the point where they've actually started getting the right sort of metal insert into the grip. So that's not going to help us here. One of the, the best telltales that's still there is this little cutout lip on the left side of the grip. That's cut down because that's where the safety lever comes down over the grip, and so it has to be a little thinner. And on the fakes, it's thicker than it is on the real ones. You'll notice this is right here. This is really thin. In fact, it's actually kind of bowed in, because it's thin enough that it's gotten deformed over time. That looks like a problem, but that is actually an indication that it's original. If we go through and look at our non-party non leader authentic grips, again, you look at this little section right there, very thin, a little bit bowed in. This one, again, very thin, and that one's definitely got some bow to it. This one isn't bowed, but again, you can see it's much thinner than the fake one is right up in here. If you just look at the Eagle and Swastika, they did a really good job. The workmanship is... the detail is just a tiny bit better on the authentic ones, but they're really close. And if you don't have two side by side to compare, it would be really difficult to spot the difference. But you can see a few little things, like the, if you look at the chest feathers in the Eagle, they're a little bit different. They're nicer here. They're a little more three-dimensional on the real one. If we look at the front, you can see that the workmanship is a little bit better on the original. Look at these locking tabs compared to these. You can't always count on that, because it's easy for an original to have gotten worn uh, a bit and look a little less, uh, less professional. And by the way, you can't count on the amount of plastic covering that metal insert to be indicative, because that varies widely among real ones. You can also see just a little bit of difference in the thickness of the, the side panels. So this guy on the left is our fake, this one on the right is an authentic party leader. And you know, compare this to that, you can see that the one on the left is just a little bit thicker. This, by the way, is one of the best fakes out there that Tom at Legacy has found yet. So if you can see the differences between these two, you should be pretty well equipped to go out there and I properly identify one that you find anywhere else. There is one more version that we need to take a look at, and that is the black colored version. These were introduced relatively late in the war, and the, the grips transitioned from this cool mottled reddish brown to a solid black on all of the standard production guns late in the war as well. Now there's a little bit of um, of debate about the authenticity of the black grip guns. However, there are a couple that have absolutely been verified as coming back with veterans uh, from the war, and there are some out there. However, there are clearly not very many. There are certainly a lot fewer of these than there are of the red-brown style of party leader. Unfortunately, well, let me start by saying that these will typically have, they will have to have, late war features. So relatively late production. You can see that the finish on this gun is much cruder than on the early production pre-war guns. Um, you know, the, the general fit and, and polish of the gun is going to be commensurate with a late war example. Identifying a legitimate grip, however, is tricky, because without the, some of the colouring uh, to be a guide, it's a lot harder to differentiate this fake one from this real one. And uh, in fact on this one you can see that sidewall that I was just telling you is a good indicator. You can't really... like that's a thin sidewall, that looks authentic. On the black one here there's not much difference in wall thickness. Um, this gets really, really difficult, because this is about a $200 reproduction fake grip. So. How are you supposed to figure out which ones are real? Well, this is a situation where it really comes down to provenance and other circumstances. Do you trust the person who has it? Is there a, a viable, rational explanation for where it came from, how it got into this person's possession? Uh, you know, we're getting to the point where the original veterans who brought these guns back, very few of them remain alive today. And so, you know, 20, 30 years ago, the solution would have been find the guy who actually brought the gun back and buy it from a veteran if you want to be really sure that it's a real thing. Today you really don't have that option. So it comes down to 
Do you have documentation? Do you have provenance? Um, do you trust the seller? And I think for a lot of people, this is the sort of gun that can very easily become, I want one, but I'm just not going to buy one because I'm not confident that I can properly authenticate it as being real, and it's a tremendous amount of money to spend on something that might be indistinguishably fake. All right, that is a lot of little fine detail to go over, but we have one more element of the party leader PPK to take a look at before we are complete, and that is the holster that went with them, because Naturally, this was a, uh, a political party that put a lot of emphasis on iconography and symbolism and, and decoration and looking really smart, and so naturally they embellished the holsters to go along with the guns. Now, the very first batch, the RZM party leaders, just used standard holsters made by Akka, A-K-A-H, um, without really any distinguishing features. When they brought out the fancy Swastika Eagle Grip, they went ahead and embellished the holster to match. So you will get a holster like this that has the same eagle and swastika stamped on it. It is otherwise a standard PPK holster. You've got a space for a spare magazine. Now inside here you would usually have a, uh, an ink stamp of PPK, and you can just barely make out the remnants of that on this one. And then you have a couple little markings here on the cover flap. Uh, DGRM is, uh, indicates party, Nazi party, and then this little symbol below it is a pair of crossed rifles that is the Akka company logo. So all of Akka's holsters have the symbol, only the party leaders are marked uh, DRGM. And lastly, the, uh, the little locking tab here is cut square at the top and stitched down. Standard holsters have a longer rounded tab. Well, that is simply unacceptable on a party leader holster because it would obscure the swastika. So for just these, they cut that down. In fact, you can see where that had been rounded. They cut it off, folded it over, and stitched it so that it doesn't obstruct your nice party iconography. The belt buckle, of course, was the same thing, eagle and swastika logo on it. And this was another accessory that was sold only to party officials through a little catalog along with the pistols and the grips and the holsters. In fact, kind of interesting, while the party leader guns by 1938 were not marked with RZM, RZM was, as an organization remained in existence until 1943, continuing to handle procurement for the Nazi party. And quite a lot of various goods will have an RZM stamp on them, including the back of this belt buckle, which has a little RZM molded into it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. This is a subject that I have been loath to cover for fear of not having legitimate authentic examples. And so I really appreciate that Legacy has unassailably correct versions of these, because they are so easy to fake. So if you are actually looking to get one of these, if you find one, Legacy is, Tom at Legacy, is happy to do an authentication on it as best he can over the internet. If you send him some pictures to info at legacy-collectibles.com, he's happy to assess it um, as best he can. This is one of those things that, if it's fake, it's often something that he can spot as fake and tell you, no, that's, that's definitely a fake one. Proving that something is authentic, especially from pictures, is a little more difficult, but for free of charge. He's happy to do that um, as a service to the collector community, which is really cool. So um, if you're interested, definitely check out Legacy, and thanks for watching.